In this clip I'm going to demonstrate why two-stage least squares is basically the same as IV estimation. So what we first need to do is we need to introduce a thing which is called a projection matrix. So let's do that. Say you have a particular model. Q is a function, a linear function of m, gamma is a parameter, vector and w are error terms, then our OLS estimate for gamma hat is m prime m inverse m prime q. That means we can calculate our projected values for q which is n times gamma hat and if we now substitute for gamma hat how we estimated it then we get this term. So now what we do, all these terms of m we just collect them in one matrix and we call them pm and this is what we call the projection matrix. It is symmetric and idempotent. What does that mean? means that PM is equal to PM prime and idempotent means that PM times PM is nothing else but PM. So what we established here is basically how we get from Q to Q hat and that's intermediated with this projection matrix. So let's return to the problem or let's start with the problem we're interested in. Let's say we have a regression model y equals x beta plus u. We want to estimate that but some elements in x are correlated with u. Now this x we have several columns in there. Let's say we have k columns. The first could well be a constant and the problem now is that the second column x2, the x2 variable, that is the variable that is correlated with the error term. So we have we have a problem. We know assumption A4 is breached. So this is at the entire matrix X. Now say we also have another variable set 2 which is uncorrelated with U and indeed correlated with X2. So it's not the same as X2 but it's related to X2 but uncorrelated to U. Now if you create a new matrix where we replace the x2 with the set2, this is now the matrix we shall call set. It is of course possible that there is another variable in x that is correlated with the error term. We would then have to find another variable set, another instrument that is uncorrelated to u and correlated with that particular x. So what is the two-stage least squares approach to, to this issue? The first step really we need to achieve is that we want to strip from our variable x2 that part of the variation that is uncorrelated to the error term u. So how do we achieve that? As all the elements in our matrix set are uncorrelated with u, we can use a regression approach to extract that variation. We think about the model x2 being a function of all the sets and to obtain the variation in x2 that is correlated with u, we find all the variation that's correlated to the sets. So we find the x2 hat from here. We discussed earlier that we can use our projection matrix approach. So x2 hat is equal to the projection matrix as we've defined it earlier up here. Now just with our matrix set. So it's a projection matrix of set times x2. So we're basically extracting from the red, from the contaminated x2, we are extracting the green bit that's uncorrelated with u. Now we can also do that for all elements rather than just x2, we do it for the entire matrix x. We do this because it will later facilitate our transition from two-stage least squares to IV. So x hat is equal to the projection matrix of z times x. So what do we get when we do this? We get k columns for x set and it turns out the first column and actually all but the second column will just return the x's again. The second column will return x2 hat as before. Now why do we get just the x's back for all other columns and that's because all the other x's, x1, x3, all the way to xk, are part of the set matrix. So if you are trying to explain x1 with elements in set, well, as set 
includes x1, we can perfectly explain variation in x1. So we basically discussed the first step of our two-stage least squares procedure. So let's think about what the second step is. In the second step, we use these x hats, which really only differ from the x in that element, which is correlated with the u. We're going to use that x hat in our original problem, okay? In that problem, which I'll label asterisk. And so we're going to use these x hats instead of the x. So this is basically what we'll estimate now. The coefficient will be different, and I therefore label it or give it a subscript iv, because in the end we'll get our iv estimates. By construction, the x hats are going to be uncorrelated to u. That means we can basically apply OLS to this new model. And if we apply OLS to this new model, what's going to be our OLS estimator for the beta iv? It's going to be beta hat iv as you see it, your usual formula just with x hat. Now x hat, of course, you know is equal to pz times x, so we'll just replace the x hats everywhere with pz times x. So this equality comes from what we discussed before, how we derived the x hats. So from now on it's basically just algebra. Okay, firstly we uh, use a little bit of uh, matrix rules, we uh, get rid of one of the transposes. So actually let me get rid of the transpose here as well for the, for the outer bracket. So this is just using the transpose rules. Now as PZ is symmetric, we can actually uh, get rid of the transposes with, at all the PZs. And second, as P set being a protection matrix is idempotent, we can also eliminate one of the P sets inside the inverse. Now, next what we'll do is we'll just replace our definition for the projection matrix uh, P set. That's just all these sets. Make sure you get that right. There's a transpose here. Okay, so that's this looks quite messy. Uh, but we will use another rule of uh, matrix calculation, A, B inverse, the same as A inverse, B inverse, and we're going to apply, uh, sorry, that isn't quite right, of course it's uh, A, B inverse, the same as B inverse, A inverse, we need to change the order of the matrices. So why does that help us? It will be obvious very soon. Briefly define this, or think of this as A and this as B, so then we'll have z prime x inverse, that's going to be the b inverse, and x prime z, z prime z inverse, inverse of that is going to be the a inverse, and all the rest stays as it is. And then we apply the same rule again, but this time this is a, and this time this is b, so everything else will stay the same, and now we have z prime z inverse inverse, now inverse inverse of course will We'll just cancel out so we just get z prime z and then x prime z inverse and then all the rest will remain unchanged. It still looks pretty messy but now the magic happens. This cancels out, this cancels out. So what we are left with is z prime x inverse z prime y. Wonderful. And of course this is just the definition of our IV estimator as you can find it in definitions in the book and the lecture. So recall what the problem was. The problem was that we want to estimate this model, but the x and the u are correlated. So we make use of that additional set information and we generate a new estimator. Beta hat iv is z prime x inverse z prime y. This is the iv estimator that allows us to perform inference on the beta even if the axes are correlated with u if we have suitable instruments. Important, we are not just replacing the x with the z. Okay? Both the x and the z make an appearance in this estimator. And lastly what we established in this clip is that the IV estimator really at heart is a two-stage least squares estimator.